Multiple myeloma is not necessarily a lymphoma when we classify these diagnostically, but it is a malignant neoplasm of a B cell, in particular uh, of the plasma cell. The plasma cell uh, is the B cell that produces antibodies. Now, the way we diagnose uh, multiple myeloma, or the way we start the diagnostic path, is to order something called a serum protein electrophoresis or a urine protein electrophoresis. What this does is it sorts out all the proteins in the blood or in the urine on an electrophoresis. And usually you'll see a number of different spikes that represent different normal proteins. But in the case of a multiple myeloma, what you have going on is a plasma cell that's producing large amounts of a monoclonal antibody. It's so very large amounts of immunoglobulin of the same exact variety because it's a malignant clone. And so what you're going to see is a very large spike, an abnormal spike, on the serum or urine protein electrophoresis. We call the spike the M spike, and it can either be secondary to increased IgG production, so a monoclonal IgG, that's most common. The multiple myeloma can also produce a monoclonal IgA, and so either one is going to give you an M spike on the protein electrophoresis. Now, the reason this tumor is so important and can be so dangerous is because this overproduction of immunoglobulin can cause a lot of problems. Now, the first and most important of these is going to be renal failure. Now, the renal failure in multiple myeloma is actually secondary to multiple mechanisms, but one of them is that overproduction of the light chain variety of immunoglobulin actually causes too much light chain, and that light chain can get stuck in the renal tubules and cause nephropathy and acute renal failure. Now, we call these light chains Bentz-Jones proteins. Now, the Bentz-Jones proteins, since they are light chains, are actually in multiple myeloma, usually of the kappa variety. If you think back to our immunology talk, we talked about two varieties of light chains in humans. There are kappa light chains and lambda light chain. And the kappa light chains are much more common in humans. And as a result, they are also much more common, the type of light chain that's a Bentz-Jones protein. So they are usually kappa light chains. And as I said, they get lodged in the kidney tubules. Now, this cast nephropathy, as we call it, can cause acute renal failure. But acute renal failure can also be caused by other mechanisms, thanks to multiple myeloma. Now, one of them is that these patients actually get amyloidosis more frequently than other patients. The reason being, all this overproduction of, of abnormal protein results in too much amyloid, and we get AL, light chain amyloid, buildup in all of the organs. One of them can be the kidney, and that can also contribute to renal failure. Similarly, you can actually get hypercalcemia as one of the results of multiple myeloma. And hypercalcemia itself can be damaging to the kidney. Now, why do you get hypercalcemia in multiple myeloma? There are really two reasons. Okay, so the first is that the tumor can directly invade the bone. All right, and what you're going to see if you order an x-ray on these patients is a lytic or punched out bone lesion. This will usually happen in long bones, such as the humerus, for example. The other reason that you're going to see these punched out bone lesions is because the tumor cells in multiple myeloma actually release something called osteoclast activating factor. And as the name implies, Osteoclast activating factor activates osteoclasts, which activates bone breakdown. So those are the reasons you're going to see these punched out lytic bone lesions on x-ray in a patient with multiple myeloma. And all this bone breakdown can lead to hypercalcemia, which can lead to a lot of problems on its own, one of which is going to be renal failure. Now, one other important point to note for a patient with multiple myeloma is that on their peripheral blood smear, you often see stacking of the red blood cells. And there's now a picture on your screen of what this looks like. And it actually resembles a roll of coins. And so we call it a rouleau formation. And the rouleau formation is characteristic of multiple myeloma. And multiple myeloma should be suspected whenever you see this on step one. Now, there are a couple of related conditions to multiple myeloma that are important for us to go over. The first is called Waldenstrom's macroglobulinemia. This is similar to multiple myeloma in that there is an M spike on the serum protein electrophoresis. The difference is that the monoclonal immunoglobulin being produced in this situation is usually an IgM. So in multiple myeloma, it was usually IgG or IgA. And here in Waldenstrom's macroglobulinemia, it's usually IgM. And the result, because IgM is a larger immunoglobulin than IgG or IgA, is that you get a hyperviscosity syndrome where the blood becomes too thick or too viscous. As you might guess, this can cause decreased perfusion to organs, can cause clotting, 
and a variety of other issues. So the important point to distinguish Waldenstrom's macroglobulinemia from multiple myeloma is that Waldenstrom's does not result in any lytic bone lesions, whereas multiple myeloma, the punched out lytic bone lesion is one of the most critical aspects of the diagnosis. Now, one other related condition is called monoclonal gammopathy of undetermined significance. It's a long name. We abbreviate it by calling it MGUS or MGUS. And the name basically explains what's going on. So it's a monoclonal gammopathy, okay, meaning that there will be an M spike on your serum protein electrophoresis. So there is a monoclonal immunoglobulin production going on here. Undetermined significance is because this is generally a benign condition. There are no lytic bone lesions. There are no Bench Jones proteins. There is no renal failure. There is no cancer. Okay, it's simply a monoclonal gammopathy without any really clinical significance. Now, some people do think this might increase the risk of a patient developing multiple myeloma down the line. And so we tend to follow these patients carefully. But again, this is a clinically benign condition.